Hello everyone, we are RI Rescue Tree, and our group comprises of me, Ethan, Jerry, Kason, and Zachary. Today, we will be presenting on our rescue line. Our robot consists of two different um, parts. One is the line tracking and detecting green squares. There are two standard EV3 color sensors positioned at the front of the robot, which help to line track and ultrasonic sensors mounted at the front to detect obstacles. For the terrain, we have decided to use a reinforced drive base to ensure the stability of the robot and prevent sagging of the chassis which helps to overcome the speed bumps. We have used Omniwheels as the back wheels to improve turning capability and the use of four-wheel drive to improve maneuverability and precision of movements. Uh, our robot is made up of uh, ultrasonic sensors mounted at the front and the right side of the robot to detect the walls and a simple and reliable claw and ball storage system. So the claw will uh, spoon the ball into the, the scoop and it will, uh, it will scoop it into the ball storage system which then tips and, um, and the ball will get, um, will fall into the, into the area. There are three parts to our line track. Firstly, the calibration of sensors, which takes raw RGB values and converts them to a number between 0 and 1. Examples of this are for the red value for the right sensor, where the current red value minus the set white value divided by the set white value minus the set value gives us the red value for the right sensor. Next part is line track, where we, we are using the difference in the calibrated values for the right and left sensors, or the error, to calculate the turning angle, then multiply it by a set of values. Examples of this are calibrated values for the left sensor minus calibrated values for the right sensor, which will give us the error. And this helps to improve the reliability of our line track by only focusing on one more predictable value, green, instead of all three, which may be difficult to consistently be precise. For the last part, Line track speed, where we are going to subtract the absolute value of error mentioned above from the number of the types of the values used. For example, only using red equals to 1, or using red plus green plus blue equals to 3. It is then multiplied by a set value, which is 50. This allows the robot to be more responsive to tight turns, as the error will be high, and leads to the speed being low. On straight paths, when the error is not high, the robot also travels at a faster speed. Okay, so um, for our green square detection, firstly, uh, our robot must detect the black line before actually um, activating this green square algorithm, right? So how it does this is it basically calculates the sum of the calibrated values of each sensor and just adds them up. And if the sum is lower than a certain value, for example, 1.1, then it will, uh, it will cause the black line to actually be detected and the green square detection procedure to actually activate. So for the green squares, right, um, we have used a method where um, we, uh, we first reverse from the black line in order for the sensors to be directly on top of the green square, and then uh, take the result of the sensors calibrated values for green um, and divide it by the sum of the sensors calibrated values for all three um, colors. And if we if we see that it's larger than a set value, for example, 0.6, then the square will be green. Um, and it is this iteration of the green square detection system algorithm that we are using for the preliminary runs due to its better rely reliability and accuracy. Uh, and also uh, the this um, code can also be applied to the detection of the red line because the only thing that actually needs to be changed is the numerator of the equation, um, of, like which is the sensor's calibrated values of, for example, red now, uh, divided by the sum of the calibrated values.
yeah, uh, instead of green being the numerator. And uh, now onto the turning algorithm, right? So this is pretty straightforward. If both sensors are green, the robot U-turns. If only the left sensor detects green, the robot turns left. And if the only the right sensor detects green, um, the robot turns right, right? And how it does this is it basically turns a set angle low, um, less than 90 degrees or 180 degrees. For example, it could turn 65 degrees. Um, and then it'll slowly align itself with the line, um, moving like incrementally, basically until it detects the sensor on the opposite side of its like it turning um, detects like detects the line, uh, black line, which indicates that it's on the right path on the black line. All right, and so for a rescue zone, right? Um, sadly, we weren't able to actually find enough time to implement and properly code this, but we have come up with some concepts. So firstly, um, it's about like detecting the, uh, getting the dimensions of the rescue zone, right? Uh, so basically we use the ultra, uh, we knew that the rescue zone dimensions are preset to 1200 by 900 CM. However, we don't know in what orientation, for example, the, um, the length of it could be one, 1200, uh, no, one, 120 cm, while the uh, width could be 90 or the other way around, right? And so we used, um, we basically took the values from the front ultrasonic sensor and just checked if they were closer to 900 or 1200 uh, mm, right? And then we used, uh, we if it was closer to 900, we would then make it so that the um, the length of the the uh, the rescue zone would be ninety cm, and uh, consequently the width would be one hundred twenty. And so on uh, onto the um, like software strategy that we also implemented, uh, we are thinking of right. And so, firstly, there's the evacuation point detection system where the robot essentially um, detects what corner it is in, right? So um, the it, we align the rescue zone such that it the robot is either starts on the bottom right or bottom left corner. If it's on the bottom right, then it will just uh, detect the wall and continue just moving forward, right? And then turn forty five degrees once it reaches somewhere near um the the oppo opposing wall. And by doing this, it aligns itself with the potential evacuation point wall, uh, which is the uh, level two one that might be at that um, uh, corner, like in front of the initial starting point. And if it detects um, that there is an object within a certain distance, when it slowly drives after turning 45 degrees uh, to the left, then it will confirm that there is indeed the evacuation point at the, for example, the top right corner. And that, yeah. And for the left, the bottom left corner, conversely, it's the robot does the same thing, except it first just turns um, 90 degrees to the right. And yeah, the if it detects a, a wall, um, the evacuation point will be at the bottom right instead of the top right. Okay, um, and if it doesn't detect it, then the um, the evacuation point will be confirmed to be at the opposing, like um, the opposing uh, corner. For example, if it doesn't detect that bottom right, it will detect that uh, top left. Uh, and so for our team members, right? Uh, me and Ethan are for uh, soft. We work um, on the software and programming of the robot. And Ethan has programmed a line track while I've coded the green square detection algorithm and thought of potential strategies to use for the rescue zone. Um, and for Jerry and Kason, they've built, uh, they've done work on the hardware where Jerry constructed the drive base and Kason did the claw. And then, um, they collaborated on building the ball collection area on top of the, the box. And I would just say that the team cohesion was quite good and every member did contribute significantly to the group and its success.
for the hardware we've learned from previous competitions <coughs> where we should use a less bulky robot frame and we should use exos instead of beams as they are lighter but definitely just as strong as beams themselves. We also uh, were more aware of the claw requirements and more thought was put into the design when we were given the task. Uh, for the software, uh, we decided to focus on line tracking this year as it is the most important ex aspect of this competition. Last year, even though we had a semi-complete green square detection algorithm and code for the claw in place, we couldn't score many points due to the lack of a reliable line tracking algorithm. This has influenced our prioritization of line tracking this year, leading us to create a more reliable line track that allowed us to score more points. Also, we have decided not to overcomplicate the green square detection algorithm. Last year, our green square code became very convoluted, including numerous variables such as black distance and white distance, based on the concepts explained previously and other coefficients. Our tinkering with all of these conditions was inefficient and did not result in a drastic and significant rise in the reliability of our de detection algorithm. Hence, we have chosen to keep our code simpler this year only using calibrated values and not in involving links or n distances. Uh, and for, I mean, we couldn't create the rescue zone code this year or the last, but, and thus we don't have actual much, um, much experience on what to look out for. But however, we can make some informed guesses on what might be potentially important. So firstly, um, just like, uh, just that is just as it applies to all code, we need to make sure that it isn't as complex, right? In order to prevent us from wasting a lot of time just tweaking, um, while not having any significant impact on the performance of the robot. And secondly, we could um also, we would also possibly um, uh, need to focus on how wide the claw is. For example, if the claw wasn't as wide as the robot, then the balls which come to the side of the robot have a higher chance of not being actually picked up by the claw and thus the robot will probably miss those balls uh, or and vic or victims and the third um concern would be uh, how the front ultrasonic sensor would actually be blocked due to the claw coming down in front of it right and so we we are seeking to rectify this issue by number one uh not relying as much on the front ultrasonic sensor when actually doing the sweep. And number two, um, trying to include gaps in the front claw where the ultrasonic sensor can actually sense through uh, and like sense the wall instead of the claw. So regarding custom electronics, how groups robots electronics have been built entirely out of LEGO EV3 components and do not incorporate any custom electronics such as brushless motors or any non-LEGO components. Hence, we are unable to share about the custom hardware that we employed simply because we didn't use any. With that, we would like to thank you for your attention. The link to the full code can also be seen on your screen.